Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics this Sunday. Let's get more now on the McKesson settlement with correspondent Adrian Robbins. Delegate Andrew Robinson joining us now, Democrat from Kanawha County. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, how are you doing today? Very good, very good. Uh, obviously, the big news is the McKesson settlement. A lot has been said about the amount. What are your thoughts about the amount that West Virginia is getting from, from the corporation? Well, I'm no attorney. I don't want to make any dictations of is $37 million enough or is it not enough? It doesn't sound like the experts in the field think it is, is up to standards of what across the nation we're seeing, but hopefully uh, the AG did his homework and we, we got what we deserve. And for us to have a one-time slap on the wrist of $37 million when we know we're losing over $8 billion a year in economic vitality, all the damage they've done, all the heartache, the loss of loved ones. Now, obviously, whether it's enough or not, we got the money. Um, the big question now is, what will the Attorney General do with his share of the money? You have some ideas, along with Delegate Kayla Kessinger, for that. Tell us a little bit about what you think should be done. Well, the settlement's interesting, and, and there's some dictation within the settlement that says that DHHR gets a section, uh, Division of Military Affairs gets a section of, of the money, and then the other portion goes back to the Attorney General for him to decide either spend on office expenses or await the legislature to appropriate those funds somewhere. What I think should be done, especially with the funds that are awaiting in the Attorney General's office, is they should be put in the Ryan Brown Fund, which has been successful in building hundreds of recovery beds across West Virginia already. Now, the Ryan Brown Addiction Prevention and Recovery Fund, you have a close personal connection to that. Tell us a little bit about your background with Ryan Brown. Well, Ryan was one of my best friends uh, growing up from two or three years old. His mother babysat me, and, and we went to middle, uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, and then off to college together. And unfortunately, somewhere in there, Ryan fell into the uh, thralls of addiction, and he passed away back in 2014. And since then, his mother has been a uh, avid, avid advocate for treatment, recovery, and opportunities for West Virginians to recover from the drug crisis that we faced. And uh, for that reason, we named the fund after Ryan. And for some people who don't know about the Ryan Brown Fund, tell us about some of the good things that it's doing throughout West Virginia. Well, the Ryan Brown Fund was created and in, in actually at, off of previous um, settlement money, and it was created to create uh, actual infrastructure, actual beds to put uh, West Virginia treatment centers into operation. So that money went and actually built the structures, built the uh, buildings, and allowed these places to begin. When he died, he was on a wait list for two programs and he just received his Medicaid card three days before, you know, due to the, you know, Affordable Care Act. Um, and so, in fact, I mean, I can't say that that would have saved him, but it sure would have given opportunity. This money is obviously coming because of the damage opioids have done to West Virginia. How important do you think it is that it goes back to repairing some of those damages? Well, we're seeing that uh, we're expending probably around $8.8 .8 billion is the closest estimate I've heard annually to recover from the drug crisis that we faced. And when we get, even if it's just $37 million compared to $8.8 .8 billion, if we spend it on pens, pencils, and more attorneys at the Attorney General's office, I think that's a mistake. Uh, you obviously wrote this letter a couple of days ago, last week. Um, have you heard anything back, or have you heard what the Attorney General does plan to do with that portion of the money? Well, unfortunately, we have had no communication other than through the media from the Attorney General. So I, I hope he's making plans to hold on to that money and not expend it prior to uh, maybe special session when the legislature has an opportunity to appropriate those funds. Besides just it going to the Ryan Brown Fund, is there anything else that you hope happens due to this settlement? Well, hopefully a lot of these drug companies have found that the error of their ways, that they can't just bring truckloads of pills into small communities in West Virginia and expect to get away with it scot-free. I mean, we're going to take them to task. And even if it's our attorney general coming after uh, civil suits and those kind of things, we're not going to let them attack our communities and not fight back. This is the largest settlement we've seen in West Virginia so far. Do you think it's one of many we're going to see in the future? I, I'm hearing rumors of, of many more to follow, and, and hopefully they're larger, and hopefully they're things we can put into action and actually see the uh, benefits of this money in on every single community across West Virginia. All right, thank you so much. Delegate Andrew Robinson, Democrat from Kanawha County, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate that. More Inside West Virginia Politics coming up next.